So just an overview of where I'm going here. Uh, I'm going to compare reactive forms with template forms, which is uh, a bit simpler way to make forms, but it's more of a legacy approach. Um, and then I'll go into three different formulas, so to speak. Uh, the first one is how to create a reactive form. The second one is how to add reactivity to the form, and this will be with RxJS. Um, and finally, I'll talk about how to do state management re with reactive forms uh, with an approach that um, isn't always obvious uh, that you can do with reactive forms. So first of all, forms are everywhere. And um, there are many things that are forms, in, at least in the angular sense, that we might not think of. Um, so in the upper left, we have the uh, most valuable form in the world, um, of course, being the Google search, search engine. Um, and the input here is very simple, at least for the user. There's just a single text input. Um, and then we can also have more complicated forms as well. Um, so these other examples in the upper right, I have uh, Trello, and in the lower left, Twitter. Uh, so these, um, rep these are different ways of capturing input from users. Um, and in Angular, we would call these forms. So Angular template forms. Uh, this is the easiest way to start creating forms in Angular. Um, and the reason for that is uh, that the form mostly lives in the template. Uh, rather than the TypeScript, and so you're mostly working with HTML that we're all familiar with. Um, the problem with template forms is that they don't handle complex situations very well, and that's because they don't expose the form as a model in the TypeScript. Uh, the template forms API was created in Angular uh, in order to be more backward compatible, or at least more similar to the way forms were done in AngularJS. So AngularJS is the first version of Angular, um, Angular 1.x, um, and um, is actually a completely different framework than the Angular that we know today. Uh, so today we're uh, at the time of this recording on Angular 7, um, and this framework really started with Angular 2. And so when they created Angular 2, they made the template forms API uh, to be very similar to AngularJS. Uh, the way that we capture input from the user and relate that to our TypeScript code is what's called uh, banana in a box syntax. And this allows us to do two-way data binding. And so this, as shown with the ng model, um, is where you use square brackets and parentheses around the ng model directive. And you assign to it a, uh, a uh, property on the uh, components class. Uh, template forms use very little TypeScript code since they mostly live in the template. And Angular handles all of the validation and tracking of the data in the templates. So um, using that two-way binding syntax, it automatically captures changes in the TypeScript and also changes made by the user. Um, the, another downside is that you can't really unit test template forms, again, because it doesn't really have a model in the TypeScript. So this is example code for creating a template form. And this is the first and the last time I'll show template form code in this talk. Um, on the left, we have template uh, HTML for the form. And so we have a form element that we all know from HTML. Uh, it's an actual HTML form. And then we are assigning a uh, Angular template variable called f with the hashtag f equals ng form. And that's going to allow us to refer to the form in the template. Um, then we have a, a, um, a method call whenever the form is submitted. And that's with the ng-submit event. So in Angular, we use parentheses to capture events. And in this case, we're capturing the submit event with ng-submit, which is a directive. And then we have a method on our class called onSubmit. And so that method will be called anytime the submit happens on the form. Um, we also have an input. This is just a regular text input, as we'd have in, a, in regular HTML. And here we're binding the value of the input to user.firstName using the banana in a box syntax with the ng model directive. And we're also doing some validation here. We're using the built-in HTML required attribute 
and Angular knows about this and uses the uh, does the right thing with the required uh, validation. So it will actually do validation on the form according to that, and it, that will affect the overall form validity. So then in the button, we have uh, given it a type of submit. So this is going to cause a submit action on the form. And we've bound the disabled property of the button with square brackets. So in Angular, uh, to do inputs, we use square brackets around any attribute or property. And we've assigned this to um, the opposite of f.valid. So uh, forms have many different properties on them. They have valid and invalid. They have pristine and touched, uh, dirty, and, um, and a few others as well. Um, so in this case, we're using the valid property and taking the opposite of it um, so that the button will be disabled whenever the form is not valid. There are reasons why we're not using f.invalid here. Um, in this case, they would both be similar. Um, but as we'll see with async validators, they can sometimes be different. Um, and on the right side, uh, we have component TypeScript. So this is code that goes in the uh, class for the component. And so we have an empty object called user. And since we're binding with ng-model in the template to user.firstName, Angular will just create a property on that object called firstName. And then whenever um, this, the form is submitted, it calls onSubmit. So that onSubmit method is called, which just does a console log. Uh, as we can see, um, the TypeScript doesn't have a model for the form at all. And so we're limited to what kind of validators we can do in HTML. Uh, so things beyond required, really, we can't really do with template forms. Um, there's no real easy way, easy way to do unit testing. Uh, you can do, of course, integration tests or end-to-end -end tests with Karma and Protractor, and that's in general what you want to do anyway with your forms. Um, but often it's nice to have unit tests of your forms because unit tests are faster. So if you have a CI/CD pipeline, you can do unit testing right in the pipeline uh, very quickly. And also when you're developing, you can quickly run your tests uh, to have a faster iteration while you're developing. Um, and there's also no real easy way to to do reactive features. So we'll see some examples of those later, um, but reactive features would be anything like a dynamic form, where you have multiple different uh, inputs that um, you don't have just the same inputs all the time. Uh, depending on certain criteria, you have different, different sets of inputs. Uh, other things would be like changing the values of various form elements depending on how other elements are set and things like that. These are extremely common in enterprise apps, or really any application. Um, and so we'd really want to have a way to do reactive features. And reactive forms gives us that. So uh, in general, uh, template forms is not something that we focus on Angular going forward. Um, although if you have something that's very simple, like a very simple form, you might still use template forms to do that if you wanted. Uh, but in general, we would focus on reactive forms uh, because they're much more flexible and uh, just better overall. Um, so as the name suggests, reactive forms are based on ArxJS. Uh, so they're inherently more flexible, again, because um, they have uh, the entire form as uh, a model for the entire form in the TypeScript. Uh, reactive forms can handle many different scenarios. Um, it has an immutable RxJS based data model. So any inputs, we can get the latest values from that uh, with an observable. And that will give us a stream of um, values as the user changes things. And we can also modify those values. Um, there's more TypeScript code and less HTML in reactive forms, um, although there can be more of both. There can be more TypeScript code. TypeScript code and more HTML code with reactive forms, but again, that's because they're more flexible. Um, reactive transformations are straightforward with observables, so RxJS gives us the ability to handle asynchronous um, um, events, uh, or even syn synchronous events, but streams of values very easily. And so we can do things like if we wanted to wait a certain amount of time for the user to stop typing in an input before we make some changes 
or act on those inputs, we can use debounce time, and that's actually just a one-line operator with ArxJS. We don't need any more code than that. Um, we can also do things like if we want to not run code until an input is actually changed. So if the user, um, you know, pasted a value that's the same as before, or if in a select they chose the same uh, item twice, uh, we can use distinct until change to filter those uh, duplicate events. So we'd only act on the changes when they're actually different from the previous value of code. So the basic building blocks of reactive forms are the form control, form group, and form array. And all of these inherit a base class called abstract control. And each of these represents uh, an element or a group of elements in the template in the HTML. So from the TypeScript side, we have full control over our form in terms of we can get its state, or we can even modify its state that way. Um, all of these classes have um, RxJS uh, values, so value changes is the most commonly used one. That, that gives you an observable of the latest values coming out of these controls. And um, we can also compose rich forms with this. So a form group has key value pairs uh, where each value is an abstract control and each key is a string. So we can have named controls within a form group and that can be anything. So each key value pair that can be a string name um, with a value of form control or value of form group or value of form array. And so we can nest form groups within form groups, form arrays within form arrays, form arrays within form groups. We can do any kind of combinations. And Angular gives us a few directives to use in our templates to connect the template to the TypeScript classes. So the form group directive, we can connect HTML elements to a form group object in the TypeScript. Um, if we've already bound to a form group, we can pass form group name to just give the key string for that control. Uh, we can also bind to a form control object or form control. Or if we've already bound to a form group, we can bind to um, a form control by name uh, using its key string. And so the purpose of these, again, is to connect our template elements to our TypeScript code. Uh, the entire state of the form is accessible from the form group. This is a very important point that I'll come back to later. And I've already kind of been talking about it, but the point is that uh, your entire form lives inside the form group um, or the form array or whatever your top level uh, control is, one of those two. Uh, so you don't have to do any of your own bucketing of state. We'll talk about that more.